Welcome, this video is going to focus on the modify tools in AutoCAD LT. Now this document or template can be available in the video description and note that you'll be working on the original layer. So you will be modifying these, um, these lines that are provided unlike the previous video. Please go through and watch the introduction video and the draw video as well before proceeding on to this one. Now let's get started with the move tool. Zooming in, we can go through and be selecting or the object that we want to move or the number of objects that we want to move and then select move and you can specify the displacement area or the base point. So the base point is where it's moving from. And so let's say this bottom left hand corner and then be moving at a specified distance at a specified angle or in this case, I'll, in this video, I'll go through and be doing it a bit more freehand just to speed it up. But Regularly, I wouldn't be working in this sort of freehand sort of method because precision is most important. And then I'll be placing that there. When I was drawing it, notice that it had a bit of a ghosting effect of where the original location was. And you'll notice that with the rotate and some of the other tools as well. And I find that's really helpful. We can also move or change our design by when I'm selecting it and I click again, it will highlight as red. Now, if I move that, it's going to modify the shape to an additional shape. So that you might be doing um, with, without any reason to go through and do it. But if you're applying a move tool and it's highlighting, it, you might be stretching it um, into an additional shape. Moving on to rotate. So we can go up to rotate, specify our objects or objects. And then I can press enter there and that will specify our base point. So that's upon the point that it's rotating or pivoting upon. So that can be sort of any corner. Generally, you should be able to find the midpoint of it as well. And notice it's doing some referencing there. So maybe we want to pivot it right at that point. So that polar tracking is really taking effect or that referencing. And so now we can rotate it. And so it's providing that original um, position and now the new position where we're going to move it to. Moving on to trim. So trim can be completed um, often when you're designing your, especially the interior, you might want to trim out an area where a window or a door is going to be placed. But you need to specify where it's going to trim. Otherwise, it's going to trim the whole line. So if we want to trim out this corner here, I'm going to go to trim. And then I'm going to be able to select it. And once again, it's doing a preview of what we want to go through and trim. Now we can trim out these additional lines. And that's the great function of trimming. You will be using a lot, as I said, in terms of positioning of doors and windows. Moving on, we've got mirror. So I'll just press exit so I'm no longer using that trim function. And so we can go down to mirror. We can be selecting our object as it says on the uh, cursor or at the command line or number of objects, press enter. And now it's gonna specify our first point or our mirror line. So you can be mirroring it directly from the object or from a specified line, which will then be taking into consideration that distance there. So then we have the object appearing over here. So let's select that line there. And so therefore it's doing the preview where we want it to position to. Let's go to there, that works really well. Now we'll say erase source objects. What this is asking, do you want the original object on this side? And if you want to erase it, press yes. But if you want to duplicate it, press no. Moving to fillet. So fillet, there's also the option of chamfer. I'm just gonna focus on fillet for this one, but chamfer, similar, creating a beveled uh, edge of objects. So, and they can be set at distances or angles, whereas a fillet will round the edge. So I'm selecting fillet. And now down the command line, it's asking me, well, maybe I wanna change the radius of that fillet. So I might just type in R and then press enter. And then we want it to be say 45 millimeters is the radius, press enter. And now select the first object to create a fillet. Obviously you're gonna to need to select two objects and therefore it's already creating that fillet there. Champ is working similar. It's just gonna have that um, edges provided. Moving down to scale and array. 
So scale can be completed by selecting scale and then selecting the object to go through and scale, pressing enter and specifying the base point so where it's scaling from and then we can scale it up and down. And notice that it's 2.4, so that's 2.4 times the size. So maybe we want it at, uh, where's the one that's gonna work? Okay, 1.3, that works pretty well. We can also modify a line length, similar to that with the, I went over with the move. In terms of, if we wanna scale this a little bit longer, I can be selecting it, I can then select the end and that'll turn red and then we can move that to make it a bit longer. So that's also another really quick, easy function to go through and use. Array is creating a pattern out of it. So in terms of an array, I'll select array. What I want to select the objects that I wanna create an array with, and then press enter. And then notice we have all these changes. So how many columns, how many rows, the distance between each one, which if we alter this, we can make it a bit tighter. Let's make it like that. And then how many we want, just so I'll start intruding on the others, we might make it two by, whoops, zoom out, just so I can see it, by two. Yeah, that works. And then I can close an array. And so that's an easy way to make a pattern. Under the other ones under array, you can make it circular as well. In the previous video, I looked at offset and sometimes you're gonna be also using an explode where you're exploding, especially what we call blocks or symbols, which I have used in here. So where I've used different things here, I have gone through and filled that area. I've obviously trimmed out between the walls and the doors. I've used scale, um, I've obviously rotated furniture. Um, so it's used extensively, these different modifier tools. I think this will get you set up for now going through and creating a floor plan. Thanks for watching. There'll be a video um, introducing you to how to go through and construct your floor plan.